Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Peter Rothwell from the Stroke Prevention Research Unit at Oxford University. Peter, welcome. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Pleasure. Now, Peter, how big a problem, how big an issue is strokes? Um, in the UK, for example, it's, it's, it's an enormous problem. Stroke accounts for uh, about 25% of all hospital bed days, and there are about 150,000 strokes per year. It's the commonest cause of adult disability, second most common cause of death worldwide. The incidence of stroke is falling a little bit in the UK, but it's, it's rising very quickly in the developing world as they uh, adopt similar, similar Western lifestyles. Is it getting worse as the population ages? It is, I think, in the sense that what was happening before was people were dying often in middle age uh, of coronary disease, and now that the rates of coronary disease are falling very rapidly, people are surviving a few years longer, getting to the age where they're at risk of stroke from the, the same risk factors. Now, obviously, what we're looking to do is prevent strokes in the first place. How do we do that? Stroke is exquisitely preventable, really simple, simple interventions. Blood pressure is by far the most powerful risk factor for stroke, so high blood pressure. One way or another accounts for about half of all strokes, so better diagnosis of uh, high blood pressure, broader treatment of uh, more patients uh, who are healthy, middle-aged, have their blood pressure checked. That, that alone would have an enormous impact. Peter, to be honest, it doesn't sound that difficult. We don't need uh, new novel risk factors, uh, genetic-based therapies. We just need to apply properly what we already know, and we could prevent most strokes. Now, Peter, I know that uh, very often when people have a, a secondary stroke, the symptoms are a lot more severe. What can we do to prevent secondary strokes? Yeah, no, that's a good question. A lot of patients that... Um, have a stroke, have had a preceding warning event, often quite a minor event, what's called a, a transient ischemic attack or a minor stroke. And we, we found over the last few years that if you treat that urgently, you have acute prevention, as it were, then you can reduce the risk of a major stroke over the next few days, weeks and months by about 80%. So just by using antiplatelet drugs to thin the blood, blood pressure lowering drugs, statins and uh, carotid surgery where relevant, anticoagulation in, in certain patients. So the things that we know work uh, do still work in secondary prevention. What's the provision like? Is it standard? Are you likely to get the same treatment wherever you are or is it more like a lottery? It, it's getting better, um, particularly for acute stroke treatment in the UK. And I used to tell people that if I had a stroke in London, I would go straight to Heathrow and fly to Paris because I'd have more chance of getting treated acutely, urgently in Paris than in... Uh, in London, but in fact stroke care in the UK has improved quite a lot in, in recent years, so uh, there's less of a postcode lottery and the overall quality is improving. So Peter, what can each and every one of us do to, to look after ourselves? I think diet's important, avoiding, avoiding obesity, uh, regular exercise clearly is an important part of that, and also lowers blood pressure. Getting your blood pressure checked is crucial. Women tend to get their blood pressures checked uh, when they go on the pill, when they're pregnant, after they're pregnant, when they go on HRT. A lot of men never get their blood pressure checked at all until they go for their first screen at the age of 60, 65. Um, so particularly for men, uh, keeping an eye on your blood pressure is the most important thing. Now, Peter, finally, what should we be doing as a health service, as a health system, to prevent or minimise strokes? I, I think probably uh, the old adage, prevention is better than cure. Uh, it's a truism, but uh, stroke, once you've had a major stroke, yes, you, you can improve the outcome with acute treatment. Yes, rehabilitation does, does have some benefits, but I think avoiding stroke in the first place. So organising our primary prevention and our secondary prevention better is, uh, from a health economic point of view, by far the most sensible option. Well, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you very much for your time. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.